everyone welcome back to my channel if this is your first time joining us welcome um, before we start with this video I just like to say thank you thank you thank you to all the support that I've for all the support that I've received um, from my first video we got over the last time I checked 150 views and 26 subscribers so that is amazing and I am so so grateful lots of um, messages on social media as well so I love that keep liking keep commenting keep subscribing keep sharing please 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 and let's grow this family let's grow this platform and really start reading so let's get right into it so in our last video I mentioned that we were going to be reviewing Shonda Rhimes' Year of Yes in the next video, which is this video. Before we get into the meat of the book, I just want to talk a little bit about the synopsis, what the book is about, and um, yeah, what you can expect from the book on a very surface level. So um, basically, the book is about Shonda Rhimes and her journey out of her comfort zone. Um, it all starts at Thanksgiving dinner while her sister and her are in the kitchen and they're having a conversation. And John is basically telling her about all these amazing events and media appearances and just like opportunities that she's been given or invited to or um, asked to attend. And her sister responds by asking her if she's ever going to say yes to any of these invites. And that kind of sends Shonda spiraling, but not straight away. Um, she kind of has a quiet moment away from that after the Thanksgiving dinner where she has some internal reflection and realizes that her sister might be right. She never really says yes to anything. So after that, she commits to just a year, an entire 365 days of saying yes to everything that comes her way. And I mean everything. So that's appearances, interviews. Um, opportunities to speak and it just opens up her world to a lot of you know life lessons um, growth opportunities and a lot of humor so the book is written in an autobiographical style it's very tongue-in-cheek very funny um, it's written in the first person narrator so we get to sh follow Shonda throughout her journey as well as hear what she's thinking in terms of Shonda Rhimes as a person if you don't know who Shonda Rhimes is she is the creator and executive producer of shows Grey's Anatomy, Private Practice and Scandal or The Fixer in South Africa as well as the executive director of How to Get Away with Murder. So personally I am a Shonda Rhimes stan. I am part of the Shonda Land fandom. I am invested. I was, I've watched How to Get Away with Murder from the beginning. I watched all the seasons of the, um, the Fixer, which is no longer in production. I watch Grey's Anatomy. Private Practice is the only show that I haven't necessarily, um, you know, watched. But I'm, but I'm really encouraged to watch the show because I think that um, after reading the book, she used a lot of references uh, from her series that she writes or produces. And I think that was, for me, an opportunity, well... Something that brought color to the book that I don't think I would have appreciated if I hadn't been a part of the Shondaland fandom up until this point. So that being said, let's go into a deeper analysis. She is famous for her writing style and she's famous for her production, the, her storylines, the way she executes and um, her way of thinking. So that definitely came out for me in the book. She was very descriptive, very emotive, very honest, very candid, and also very, I don't know, like raw. The writing was almost refreshing because I think that um, after this year of years, she was just so open to really get, letting us into her world and letting us into the reasons behind what she did, how she thought, and also a lot of the behind the scenes throughout the year of years, which she tracks her character development so well. So we start off with this genre that's very timid, very introverted, um, very reserved and deathly afraid of just attention, like unnecessary attention. So she does almost anything to kind of keep herself separated or um, removed from a lot of things, which is one of the reasons why um, she actually at the beginning of the book was kind of not really open to doing a lot of appearances or saying yes to a lot of things because um, it comes from that introverted nature. You'll actually feel like you're having a conversation with her. She's very um, 
informal, the typography in the actual book. It's used very well to kind of convey some of her thoughts throughout the book, which was really awesome and really well done. So shout out to um, the publishers and Shonda for that. Um, and another thing that I liked about the book was she's very, like, she's so relatable. So there were some things that I can't necessarily relate to because I'm not, for example, a mother when she had um, some antidotes that she used about motherhood and her experiences throughout the year of years in terms of being a mom. Um, but because she writes so richly and um, conversationally, I was also able to draw my own lessons from those stories that she was telling. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about some of the things that stood out for me in the book beyond um, just the general um, quick points. So the first thing I want to pick on is um, her exploration into the character of Christina Yang and how she used Christina's independence and her goal-driven nature, her pursuit of her career, and she ex used that to explain herself in a way that I thought was very poignant. Tina Yang was a very um, headstrong individual. She was always very committed to her work and she didn't want a lot of the traditional things that women are supposed to want or people, but particularly women. Um, she's always been someone who thinks separately from what a lot of people expect from a woman and she always 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 prioritized her career over anything else because she was exceptional and she always wanted to chase this exceptionalism that she so we're back after a short ad break <laughs> just had to get some water because i was feeling a little bit parched all right <clears throat> back to the review Another thing that I really enjoyed about her writing was, um, or the book, was her word for, the inclusion of the word for word speech that she gave, which really stuck out to me, was um, the speech at Dartmouth College, which is her alma mater, and um, that was really awesome because if you haven't necessarily seen the YouTube videos and that type of thing, um, you could almost feel like you were there because uh, you actually can read the book, you can read the words from the speech and then maybe go and have a look at the YouTube videos later on which I would definitely recommend and the speeches almost mean more to you because now you've read the words some of the things that she discusses and how she discusses them she really she really didn't have to go that hard like she really didn't have to um, let us into her world the way that she did but I think that comes with the year of years that she almost said yes to being vulnerable, which was also a big theme in the book. Uh, what I loved about the book as well was her use of imagery. So she is very, very good, exceptional actually, at creating a visual picture in your mind. She speaks about how she always looked up to Toni Morrison in the book, and um, Toni Morrison is a iconic author. Like, she has written, if you know her books, I know off the top of my head I can think of Beloved, which is a very difficult read. Like, she writes about the black experience in a way that is very raw and almost uncomfortable to read. I remember it was very difficult for me to read that book if I even finished the book. I'm not sure I finished it because I just struggled to really get through it without crying every two minutes but that's Toni Morrison may she rest in peace and um, she speaks about how she always wanted to be Toni Morrison like everything leading up to that point when she decided that she wanted to try something different she wanted to be Toni 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 and then later on in the book she speaks about how she had lunch with Toni Morrison which was amazing while she was still with us and Toni Morrison couldn't stop talking about her shows. That's all Tony wanted to talk about. Um, and that was really amazing for me because she actually said after that um, slice of life moment that if she had continued pursuing the stream of hers, wanting to be Tony, wanting to be Tony, 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 she never would have been Shonda Rhimes. She never would have been Shonda Land. You know, so that was. Um, very very impactful um so 
the last thing for me that stood out in her writing and um, the story throughout Year of Yes was the idea of being first only different, which is um, something that she discusses uh, that a lot of media professionals always ask her when interviewing. So she speaks about how um, this idea of being a first only different basically is being the first, the only, doing something different and that's something that has come up in a lot of her interviews that's often the first question that people ask her like so Shonda how does it feel to be a black woman in the television industry shifting the narrative from what we've normally seen to something that we haven't seen before on TV which is something that she's very well known for and she um, spoke about how she doesn't necessarily view herself as being something different. She doesn't necessarily view herself as being a trailblazer. And she would like to kind of move away from that term in terms of describing herself, but more focus on the fact that what she wants for TV, for um, media representation, is representing the stories of normal people on TV. So she refers to it instead of, you know, um, revolutionizing TV or changing the way that we view TV and characters on TV, she spoke about how she normalizes TV. There was a moment in the book when Shonda is ready, she's dressed, she's on her way out to one of these award shows or a media appearance or something along those lines, and um, her daughter calls to her, and I think it's her youngest daughter at that point, and her daughter calls to her and says, Mommy, do you want to play? And at that moment, um, short circuits a bit because she says that she said yes to this appearance but then now her daughter wants her to play with her and she committed to saying yes to everything and what I thought she would do was you know kind of drop the media appearance and just play with her daughter but then that but what she actually does is she spends 15 minutes playing with her daughters and spending time with them which she says is really all the time that they need from her because after that you know they grow tired of her as kids do and then after that she just she makes her way to her appearance. That was a pivotal moment for me because it spoke to this idea of balance that you you can make time for things that are important to you in your life. You can be the career woman, you can be the good mom, you can be present in every single moment while making sure that you prioritize the things that are important to you. All right. So, in general, for anybody who's interested in reading this book, my tips would be, first of all, to join the Shonda Rhimes fandom because what have you been doing? You must pay attention. It's a very quick read. It's an insightful read. Um, but if you don't necessarily give it the attention that it needs, I think that you miss out. This book definitely gives you insight into what I feel like has been the enigma of Shonda Rhimes for a very long time. I mean, watching Grey's Anatomy and just seeing at the beginning created by Shonda Rhimes and wanting to know more about this person. So this book is an opportunity for you to know more about Shonda Rhimes. Um, yeah, expect tongue-in-cheek style, lots of jokes, lots of humor, lots of clever humor, lots of information as well and um, a lot of things I had to kind of you know give myself time to process because she is just so intelligent and she writes very richly but she also writes simply which is I think maybe my favorite part of this whole experience reading this book was just how her words are so simple her expressions the way she explains things, she's not verbose, she's not pretentious, she's just very real and I think that's it. So that is my review of um, Shonda Rhimes' book, Year of Yes. Um, I would definitely recommend this to anybody who is interested in a good laugh and um, I think that she does a good job in um, not making it just about you know the humor and the ha-has. I would recommend it. I would. Uh, so remember to like, comment, and subscribe.
please 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 let me know if you've read the book what you thought about the book do you intend to read the book what are you reading um and remember to follow me on my social media platforms that's at offense mdk on instagram as well as twitter and yeah bye for now